Welcome to the July 9th, 2020 public hearing. Oh, planning board meeting slash public hearing. Anyway, first item on the agenda is a site plan review for Merrick Rivero at 65 and A North Stark Highway tax map 203 lot 32 in the commercial district. The proposed, the proposed use of seasonal, seasonal, hey, I can't talk tonight. No, you can't. Nope. For a seasonal farmer's market. He came in conceptually, I believe. In June 11th, we did a site walk shortly thereafter. I don't have the date here. June 18th. Yes, I did June 18th. Um, he since submitted the whole application. So first, we've got to accept any waivers. So before the first thing, I got to appoint Mr. <laughs> Bill as a voting member. Thank you, Bruce. I do have problems with that sometimes, every time. Now, the, the next thing we have to do is approve any waivers, if there are any, or yes, if there are any. I didn't see any listed. I didn't see anything from <coughs> Kelly's summary. So uh, um, our DPW didn't come to say anything. Did we accept I, the application as complete last time? No, it was conceptual last time. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, do not hear from highway conservation assessing or fire. Is there any motion on the application? Sure, if you make one. Make a motion. We accept the application as complete. Sorry. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying. Sir, would you present your plan to us? Application to us, please. What do we need to present? You just you need to, to stand up and introduce podium. yourself. To we have a live TV audience just <laughs> waiting to hear you from you. Sure. <coughs> He's got the tie on. He should. <laughs> Just have, you just have to explain what you're doing. Uh, okay, so our intention is to use a sizable field outside uh, in the property to host a farmer's market on Saturdays during the summer, um, hopefully with the intention of bringing together the community's farms. Do you need anything else? And you're going to do a one-way traffic coming in the existing driveway? Correct, and to loop, loop it around, loop it around the outside, the right, the back field. out, back out, Quaker, like we talked about. Yep, with the intention of safety. Are you going to put something around that possible leach field area to prevent traffic? Yes. And so uh, else? Uh, either cones, or we're just going to uh, cordon the whole area off to make sure that no one drives over it and no one causes any harms to their car. We have a split rail fence that's going to do major a lot of the major markings to block off the ditch that goes next to the highway as well as prevent any cars going too close to the house. We will have uh, traffic cones marking off particular parking spots and as much signage as we can get on there to let everyone know it's a one-way route around the property and uh, to stay away from where any of the pedestrians would be walking. The, um, just so you know if there are directional signs like that, traffic signs, mm -hmm. they don't count as sign signs. Okay. <laughs> so, so you can do that without affecting your, your overall allo sign allowance. Okay. I think his existing sign is probably pretty close to a sign allowance. I think so. Yeah. You, can, you can add more is what we're trying <coughs> to say. I saw somebody manning an auger out there today, postal digger. That would be him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a fair amount of rocks in uh, various parts of that property, so <laughs> we're working our way through it. Did you show 25 parking spaces, I think I counted? Yes, we're, I think, 10 feet across on each Yeah, we use 10 foot width, which is actually uh, a little more. Is eight, but we just use 10 feet. And I think it's 10 across the north wall, 
and like 15 on the west wall. And then of course the existing driveway has spaces as well. Yep. And I would love to have a situation where we have more cars than we have parking for. I don't <laughs> anticipate 30, 40 cars. Well, if you do, don't let them park in 114. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will, we will. Or Quaker Street, for that matter. Uh, yeah. Figure it out at that point. Yes. But uh, our hopes are not that high. <laughs> How many do you need? I don't know that answer. How many that we need? Because I was I'm looking at that little sketch. Come back to that. That, uh -huh. one, that one that you sneak down by. I found the one that said oh. Greg on it. Okay. <coughs> the last one down here by 114. Yeah. You'd probably be better off without that one. Okay. Which would across the driveway if I set diagonal? The one where you ran the little triangle f for the driveway down to 114 to get into that spot. Down the down Star Highway, so when they come all the way to the yeah. end. Uh, yeah, we can cross that one off and just block it off. Is it just because of the way the location is pointed? Yeah, well, it's not only location, it's the, the vegetation that's there and mm -hmm. it's the wetness that's there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's part of why we're putting up the foot there. There's kind of protection to that. Which, which one do they fall under, in your opinion? Um, retail, including but not limited to drug food, speciality, bakery, and ice cream. You think? That's, you think it's high volume or medium volume? Medium. It's either high or medium, and it's one space per 150 square feet or one space per 250 square feet. Medium is included but not limited to clothing, shoes, general merchandise, well, the question lawn is, and garden supplies, service industries, videos. The question is, what, what do you count? How do you get to the square feet? How many? Yeah, that's the first question. Usually it's per building. This has nothing to do with the building. I mean, if you're going to count the, all the grass area in the middle of that U with square feet. He's never going to make it. Yeah. And you ought to be using at least a 250, if not yeah, more. Right. There's a low volume, including but not limited to construction remodeling services, but that doesn't fit. A parking spot is. I, so I circled the, the high volume and medium volume one. Because a parking spot is 200 square feet, right? 10 by 20? Yeah. yeah. And it's got to be a handicap one. Mm -hmm. Where is that? We haven't specifically marked one, but we can. We're going to figure out as to how the tent's set up first, and then mark the one that's closest to the tent. Closest to the tent. Want to count tent? Are you going to do tents? Are everything going to be under tents? Um, uh, awnings, covering some sort to have like a center area where people can put their own tables under. Um, we're hoping to get it to be set up so that everyone can bring either their own tables or their own chairs and set up underneath the awnings. But um, well, I guess you have to base the square footage on the size of those things. The area that's being used as retail under the tent. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's how I would uh, square yeah. it off. How did yeah. you square it off for the farmers market down at Moody Pond? Do you remember? I don't know. I don't remember. Nope. Don't remember. Yeah, because that's like open tables and so I would go with the area that's actual retail. Right that's under the I tents. Would. Yeah. Yeah. Does it show an area? Well, they show f like four rectangles here. Yeah. 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 Uh, you have any idea how big those rectangles are? The, the tents we were looking at, just the canopy pop-ups are 10 by 10. So, so, so it's 100 square feet one. each. You get like 400 square feet per rectangle here. Yeah. <coughs> so that's, there is one in, under there for low 1,200. Volume. And we could easily reduce that. Pages that. Well, let's figure. Yeah. Pages you're looking at. 1,200 divided by 250. Uh, so five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> it's a okay. little less than six is really where it is. 4.8. But that's just the retail part. Then you have to have one for the person who's like they call employee. Okay. Right? Wouldn't you count the one that has to yep. work at the table? Yep. And you got. And then you got five yep. people showing up visiting those tables. So ten maybe? They have like 12 employees per 
for the thing? One per ten? Yeah, one per ten. I, I would say one, one per, yeah. Then. And then five cars, so that's a total of 17. So. Well, look at another way around. He's got enough parking space and not counting employees for almost, well, 3,750 square feet. He's not going to have that. No, so you <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Is going, the going. office space going to be used during this time as well? Uh, it depends. We're still kind of getting the office space sort of finished. Once it's but that wouldn't be using this parking anyway. That would be yeah. The, correct. the, yeah, the, 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 the office would be using the parking in the front or else in the right. back. I would think right. Wouldn't be so we're making a clear distinction between this parking and the front parking mm. on the triangle. Yeah, that this is the parking for that square footage, not the front. Right. Even though you could that's, use it. That's my thought. Yeah. Okay. And if they run overflow, then they have it out front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will you talk to the church across the street? I mean, I'd rather not uh, involve anyone else's parking lot if I can avoid it. But if we get to the point where we're getting that kind of crowd, I can definitely bring that discussion up. Right. The police will have you bring up that. Well, yeah, <laughs> I would imagine that would be a thing. We would love to be fixed. <laughs> that would yeah. be a great problem Actually. to have. Actually. Um, did you say anything in here what your hours are going to be? We haven't done anything final, but given how other farmers markets have done, probably start at 8 and at noon. We're going to survey of other farmers markets around the area, and it's all over the board. Some of them don't start till noon, some of them Yeah, I mean, some are afternoon ones, others yeah. are morning yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. Usually they don't do both. Usually they're one or the other, morning yeah. or afternoon. Yeah. And our, our preference were, you know, to contact vendors and, and see what their preferences were, were that, rather than us dictate. Yeah, some of those vendors are going to the Concord market. Right, right. exactly. And they're from 8 to 12 or whatever their hours are. Yeah. yeah, we want to work around that as much as possible. Again, the idea is to bring this as much to the community, and if Thank members of the local farms aren't available, then there's not a whole lot of point. May I suggest that, that uh, the applicant ask for Saturday and Sunday from 8 to 5 each day. Not that he'll use it, but, but this gives him the flexibility he needs. Hmm. Well, I would suggest also adding Friday from 2 to 6 or something like that. Well, one, one night, one I day mean, during the week or something. Whatever. Whatever, but I, I don't, I, we ought to have something. Yeah. We just can't say you can be open 24 hours a day. Right. Seven days a week. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why, we, why, don't, why don't we do it? We don't, we don't want any farmers markets on Christmas Day. That's not going to happen anywhere. Like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 8 to 6 or something. Sure. Tell us what you want. Um, well, if we can leave it open from Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 8 to 6 until we can figure out a time where local farms are more apt to be there. We can then. Oh, we don't have to use it. Yeah. No, you don't have to. No, use you don't it. have to be open. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. But then you can't open Thursday. You can't be open Thursday at five o'clock. We wouldn't really Unless want to be. Back. Okay. Yeah. Unless yeah. you come back over. We'll but uh, I, I think if we were available from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, from eight to uh, eight a.m. to six p.m., yeah. that would give us the flexibility we need to make this work. And meet the needs of the vendors. Yeah. 
you want to, I mean. Craig, as long as parking. Uh, you said that there's enough parking for 3,750 square feet of selling space? Yes. That could be out in the open or under a tent, that's correct? Right. Yes. Well, the selling space, we counted just under a tent. We counted selling spaces under the tent. Yeah, but. Oh, but potentially. But 3,750 is. Anywhere. Anywhere. Right. And that's, that, that excludes the parking spaces. <coughs> right. Right. And does that, that 3,750 parking spaces, you've got 25, does that include enough for, quote, for the vendors? Because each one of those booths is going to have a vendor. And that's what we're figuring out. Well, that's, I did not do that, no. I, I just took 25 parking spaces at times 150 square feet per parking space, poof, 3,750 square feet. If he's talking three tents, 10 by 10, he's at 300, so he's nowhere near 3,700. No, he can't. He, I don't think he can put 3,700 no. feet there. But in terms of parking, it's not just customers, it's the right. sellers. Okay, if you have 10 sellers, then you're down to, no, I can't do a math already. 15 times 150. 3,000? 2250. Yep. So, in order to make sure there's enough parking, should we say that um, there must be at least one parking space for each booth, for each seller, and one or two for, eat for customers? One per 150 square feet? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, except that we don't know how much high square volume. Feet you think it's going to be high volume? Well, well that's. We've got 1,200 square feet, right? Do you read, can you read high volume and medium volume? Not as planned. Yeah. Okay, that's assuming we're, we're a high volume retail. Right. High volume retail, yeah. That, that's what we're assuming with 150 square feet. If he's medium volume, he's done 250, so it's a lot different number, obviously. This is not high volume, is it? The definition is Who knows retail. what these, I mean, it's kind of, because it's such a short selling period, I, I think once people find out about it, it's, if it was open all the time, it definitely would not be, it would be real low volume. Right. If he's open but if four he's, hours if, a week. But if he's only open one afternoon, one evening a week, then he's going to get a lot more concentrated volume during that time period, right? Of course, at the same time the regulations say, the planning board may adjust these guidelines to particular circumstances. I think, quite what, he, I think what he's should. shown here will work. The 25? Well, he could very space. easily. If he has 12 vendors there, that means there are only 12 parking places for people. Right. For customers. Which people don't go there to browse. I mean, they're, they're typically in and out. If 12 vendors, there better be more than 12 people walking around, though. <laughs> I hope. You, you would hope, <laughs> yes. Be um... Would it be better to do eight vendors then to make sure we had enough parking for everyone? Let's let's back up. Look, take a look at your map once. What are these black lines indicating? Uh, that, that's your fence. Yeah, split rail fence. Long fence. Yep. So what if you move that split rail fence closer to? It's already in. It's only in this one. No, it's already in. That's right. I forgot. I mean, we could go through the effort of redigging the holes the and move the fence. Was, if, it, if the, you're talking about the fence yeah. that's along 114, there's a bit of a trench and then some talk about whether that was wetlands because of the cat and nine tails. And we put the fence there to protect that area. I mean, yeah. we could get a few feet closer to it, but. Can you put parking along how, that how fence? How close? Yeah, we could put parking how, along How that close fence. to the fence, how far from the pavement is the fence? 10. I think I'd say closer to 20. 20 feet. Feet. I think what he can do, Craig, is he's got these. I, I, I think the, the fence is at least 10 feet. Yeah. If he's and saying the if he's right, right. Yep. five feet in is a guess. You're saying the fence is to keep people from driving into the into the ditch where the cat and I tail. Or or just a visual barrier so people don't walk into it or, or you know, walk onto the highway. If he shifted these to one side up against the road, I think then this, he could park I think on this, one side. I think of the this road. fence is more like over here. Is what I'm trying to say. Oh, as far as you, where it's you think it's located? closer to the road? Realizing that this line in this in this map is the is the right of way, not the pavement, yes. Probably, yeah, could be. I think he's got, he could rearrange this and get more parking. Parking beside one road, the uh, side of one road down here. If you look on the other, other, other side, Craig, look on the other side of your map. Yeah, that other piece. 
I think it's right. It's pretty close to that line, to this line right here. Down through. Yeah. If it's it may be two feet in from that. We have the flexibility of shrinking the farmers market retail area and at the same time increasing the parking spaces if we need to. I was thinking if you right now you got them kind of in the middle of this white space. Yes. If you shifted them over up against here, closer to the exit, you could get parking all down this side of the road yep. too. That's a possibility. We or put double on this side and move it this way. We kind of uh, tried to make it as like overestimating how much space is actually being taken up as possible to kind of err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. But it is very possible for us to move the retail space closer one way or the other to give us more parking spaces. And if that can make the difference, we can move yeah. everything and make sure that there's enough distance. And I guess I prefer if you move the retail towards 114, it might make it more visible to put double parking on this side behind okay. it. Yep. Yeah. So when you're driving down the road, you're not seeing nothing but cars, you're seeing the retail. Yeah, that makes sense. That would give us what an additional like eight spaces. If you, if you go on an angle, get another ten there. If we pull these to here, up against the road, and put a row parking in here. I, th I think it's fence as close to the road. You can put parallel parking. Well, it probably get, is. And get ten spaces right there too. But I was trying to keep the cars from parking up against the road and keep yeah. it open to the keeping the visual there so people see all the the market. Yeah, instead of the, the cars. cars. Yeah. People driving by, I think you're having a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Every Saturday. <laughs> yeah. From six to eight. We can work on that. <laughs> 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 I think it'd be better marketing wise to have it visible from the road yeah, instead of I cars. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot of flexibility. So you're going to do what? You're going to add, add the parking here? Yeah. You add 20 spaces, basically. Yeah. So why don't we say they have, we leave it approvable with 25 and with realization they can expand to 45 relatively easily. So the plus they don't have to make a new map for us. Mm-hmm. Greg, for a site plan uh, approval, do we need a, a formal uh, flat with notes? Yeah, I got to sign something, yes. I got to sign, is it approved by? Yeah. It, and is this adequate for that? I think we did it on 11 by 17 and had added some notes to it, yes. Regarding hours and Yes. Maybe. I think for the purpose of what we're talking about with the extra parking, mm -hmm. if you could show these little squares moved up against the road and just box this out here, say additional overflow parking or something, or mm -hmm. however you want to word it. You don't necessarily, I don't think, have to show the parking spaces there. Okay. Yeah, just put a little link. Yeah, yeah. Just to draw a rectangle in the area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that could even be vendor parking or whatever. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, that would be convenient right. to have the vendors the be vendors able to park, park right park, next yeah. to the tent. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Then, then you've got effectively two spaces, a vendor plus two spaces per. Have you talked to DOT about a driveway permit? We're still waiting to hear back on, on them from the current one, I guess, that tell let us know what the actual, the exi yeah, what the existing driveways are actually settled as. Really? Who did you contact? I sent an email in straight to their, their box, the whatever communication box they have about it. They have a, an online form yep. submission, so. Scott Looney still? I was going to say call Scott Looney. Okay. 
for Brian Defosis. Brian's, Brian's last name is D E S F O S S E S. He used to work for us. So. Give me that. Yeah. Uh, well, in Scott Lives and Where? If you Scott hit contacts on mm -hmm. their website well, lives or staff oh. or something okay. like that, you'll see their names right on the staff <laughs> list. Okay. And you can click but on Benji's it. But Benji's the one who's going to do the quickest. Yeah, the DOT. Scott Looney. Looney. 114. Oh. You have to get a new driveway permit when they're adding a commercial, any gotcha. use change. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Scott Looney lives right in town. If you yeah. get a hold okay. of him, he could do it. He's very flexible with meeting people. At least he has been in the past. Yes. Yes. <laughs> DOT is very good to work with. Good. I'm surprised you haven't heard back yet. So I'm thinking some kind of note saying, uh, well, I don't care, actually. We need an approval block, so I have to sign something. Okay. Saying you're approved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We need that. And need hours of operation. Okay. Um, DOT permit will give you a number, 2020-something will okay. be a permit number. That should be on here. Um, I would add the square for the additional parking or vendor parking, whatever you want to call it. I think something ought to be shown to around the septic system around the septic system Craig I think in, I think all of this should be in the motion and he can use that to prepare the I'm, tr I'm trying to help somebody prepare the motion <laughs> <laughs> make, um, it's, it's relatively cheap it's called construction fencing okay. yeah that orange and you just put it in with those four foot grade stakes to kind of weave it through the fencing if you put that around the septic system then nobody will go near it okay and you can kind of staple it to the wooden fence post so that it stays up. Okay. Zip ties. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I use. <laughs> it works great. <laughs> so do you, do you make a motion, Neil? Oh, boy. Subject to your correction. <laughs> uh, that the expedited application be approved subject to the following conditions. These conditions to be shown on the, on the plan. One, hours of operation, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 8 to 6 p.m. during the months of May, June, July, August, September, and October. Okay. Um, number two, the leach field be delineated in such a way uh, that it will not be um, driven upon. Number three, traffic to enter from Route 114 and exit onto Quaker Street. Number four, parking. There shall be 25 spaces as shown on the plan, one of which designated for uh, handicapped acts, for handicapped uh, individuals with an additional 20 spaces should the need arise to be placed on this east side, easterly side of the inside the loop. Inside the loop, yes, easterly side of the loop. Should that be westerly? That's clear. Um, That's north, five, we're putting it here, right? Uh, that internal directional signs ways. He's putting it here. Uh, yeah. the That's the west side. Well, traffic. Goes that way. Yeah. That way. He's seen put it Six. over here. Six. No, it's inside the loop. Oh. 
Craig, we don't want to say anything about the number of square feet it can have, do we? I don't think so. Okay. Um, question that I have for you, so I'm halting my motion to ask a question. Okay. Um, yeah, oh, you should add one more thing. That yeah. There should be probably two porta potties on the site while he's open. There shall be a, a, what's that, six, mm -hmm. seven. There shall be at least two porta potties on site during the hours in which, and during the hours of operation. Mm. The, of actual operation. There, there is a restroom in the retail space that's accessible. By the yeah, but we don't want you. We don't want you using it. Oh, okay. I know your septic system won't like it. Yeah. Okay. Then you, get, then you have to go and prove your septic system can handle it, and you don't want to go there. And if okay. it's not handicap accessible. Uh, I think that's the end of the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Discussion. Can we add two things? DOT permit right. and approval block. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Um, is October good or are you going to sell something on November 1st? Well, one of the discussions we've had, and Just nothing's final, is that uh, there are any charitable organizations around here that might be interested in selling Christmas trees to raise money. Because I think we could use the space as well. But otherwise, no, we don't have any interest in being out there. Anymore. Or so like school band or something. Let's well, you, if you want to sell Christmas trees yourself and make a couple bucks, I don't see what let's, the difference let's is. Let's add November and December. Okay. Uh, May 1st to December 31st? Yeah. Are you going to sell Easter lilies in April? <laughs> March. March? <laughs> oh, greenhouse. Hey, doesn't, doesn't, mean that, doesn't mean he can't sell them. He's going to be selling roses on Valentine's Day, too. Maybe. Yeah, I'm just making sure. We can do that from the inside. In a second, can I can I ask a couple We're, questions? Um, the applicant obviously intends to rent out some of the space in the building for commercial purposes. I assume. Do we have adequate parking for that? He will have to come to us for a change of use site plan. When whoever decides to rent that, we will determine that at the time of the application. Even if the person is using it as an office. Yes, because right now they aren't using it for anything, are they? Yeah, it's been mixed use for on and off for years. There was a gun shop in there less than two years ago. Yeah. Right, and that use has been abandoned for two years. Oh, I thought it was. And you just said two years ago. Well, I mean, within two years. Was it two years ago? I don't know. It's at least two and a half, maybe three. Yeah, it's been, it's been a while. Been and quite nobody's a while. been in that office since? I mean, I guess the, the place was originally, well, I got it from St. Mary's Bank as part of a, like a foreclosure sale. So I have no idea if anything was actually used in that building before I got it since they foreclosed on it. So I don't know. Uh, Woody was living in that area. Who? Woody. Scott. Scott Wood. Yeah, his, his parents are still in there. He's been over at is, that, is he a business? Do, do we need to put in not necessarily on this plat, but do we need to make a statement somewhere else that if this property is to be used for commercial purposes, another site plan, for other commercial purposes, another site plan would be required so that there's no question about that. So that they're not left hanging. So we can add a Another condition, if any additional commercial uses are proposed this property, they must come back in for another site for... Require an amended site plan. Thank you. Will we be required to file an amended site plan? And you folks still understand that that's a one-family house. 
And uh, two families, no additional grand, grand uh, what are they called? In law apartments, single family residence, because it's a place. It's an inappropriate use in a commercial district. Sure. As I have been told a couple of times, <laughs> yes. Right. Courtney, sure, could, because <coughs> could you read those back to us, please? <laughs> Wait, I have a question. Because I don't know what they all are either. Okay. Hours of operation Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 8 to 6, May through December 31st. May 1st through December 31st. But I'll write out all the months when I type this. Two, Leachfield delineated in such a way that it will be not will not be driven on. Three, traffic to enter from 114. And I didn't catch the last part, but it meant exit, 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 exit onto yep. Quaker Street. <clears throat> Parking, there shall be 25 spaces, one with a handicap, uh, one for handicapped individuals with an additional 20 spaces should the need arise to be placed on the easterly side of the inside of the loop. Five, internal direction signs shall be placed to guide traffic. Six, two porta potties on site during the hours of actual operation cannot use the inside bathrooms due to septic limitation. Seven, DOT permit. And eight, something about an approval date or approval block. 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 Yep. You know that square block that Greg signs is open? Okay. And that was all. And then another site plan is needed if, so that would be number nine. Another site plan is needed if there's another commercial use or is proposed on the property, they must come in to file an amended site plan and a single resident family only must be understood. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, don't, that's, not yeah, that's, not, that's not part of the motion. That's good. All right. So can I have a question about that interpretation? Sure. <laughs> because single family is not allowed in the commercial district. So right. what was allowed was mixed use. Right. And that's right. what's been going on there since 50s and 60s. What is mixed use? Is your, is your use an apartment in an office downstairs, mixed use, residential, right. commercial. It's been that way for since right. before zoning. Right. So if a single family is not allowed there now, why are you no, saying? Well, it's, it's a mixed use, really, because he's, he's got a commercial space and that. But he can't have another residential. You can't have, two, can't have two rental properties. You can have one rental property. That's a residence. Right, so he can have an office and he can have a rental. Yes. yes. But he can't be just a single family home. Correct. And I think that's what you said is he needs to be a single family home and he can't. No, that's not no, allowed. You're, you're correct. Yes. Okay. And, and yes. Either I misspoke or you misunderstood me. One oh, of the I, I, I thought. But he, he, but two families not allowed either. Correct. That's multifamily right. is allowed. No. Multifamily? Multifamily is allowed in the commercial. Is it? Yeah. Just single and two family is not. Right. And ADU is not. And mixed use, we're always coming for a site plan no matter what. Right. But if that office was a gun shop and that gun shop has been discontinued, anything new goes in there and needs a new site plan. That's my interpretation. So that's how yes. that office needs to be come back that's in. Point yes. And that's the keep in mind when you do that, depending on the use, you may have to look at the septic system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Back to Pastor Bill's yeah. point. I believe no. north is up, right? right. Yeah. yeah. So yes, that would be west the west, west side of the loop. Well, when I read the zoning ordinance, and that may not be the ultimate authority if there's, you know, grandfather in there, I thought it said that as commercial on commercial, you're entitled to all the uses that are in residential and rural. There's a sentence at the very end of that zoning yeah. article disallowing residential. It's single family and two family uses. Permitted, no, uh, not permitted use. It's a little sentence at okay. the end of that section. And that says single family. Otherwise, okay. you're, you're correct. It says residential homes. Residential homes. Wouldn't that be a duplex? Mm -hmm. Just asking. Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> wouldn't that be a single family says. with an apartment? Boarding, no, that wouldn't be a home. Houses, That'd be an apartment. Hotels, church, or homes, yeah, including see. cabins and motels, accessory structures. So a boarding house or rooming houses, 
boarding or rooming houses? Yes, that's because it's a business. Okay. Yeah. But do you see at the end of that section 24? Are you on Article 24? Yes. yes. 2410. Go all the way down to 2410? 10. Yep. 2410. I still think it's in the wrong spot. We tried to change it, but. Does that mean exclusively residential homes or <laughs> as part residential homes? You know, I'm not going to argue. I'm just looking for. I know, because I, I, I feel yeah, the same way. I don't. <laughs> if, it's a, if we've got commercial business and office space, then does the residential portion fall under the boarding house, rooming house? Residential home is defined as one or two family dwelling. Oh, good. We have a definition? Yeah. That's a definition on page 16. But still room for interpretation on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that means if it was, because it's only one, you can't have one or two. Okay. You'd have to make it into a multifamily, which would be, three or more yeah. and you'd have to come for a big site plan for that yeah that, that's change of use right that. right mm -hmm. I agree with that but it, it can be commercial business mm -hmm. and a single family mm -hmm. yes yes okay. 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 single family apartment slash apartment yes when I mean, you could live in it but yeah yes. yeah or we can rent out right, right. Or you can rent out. yeah that's not a problem Okay, back to discussing the motion. Yeah. <laughs> back to, discuss, back to discussing Thank Neil's you. motion. Courtney doesn't know what to do. Pastor Bill pointed out with the, the motion number or condition number four. Four, yes. Twenty-five spaces for the avenue. The additional twenty spaces inside the loop in the eastern side of the loop should be western side of the loop. Okay. So that's good. It's inside the loop. Yeah, north and south. yeah, the east side or the western side of the loop. You don't even have to say <laughs> east or west. It's inside the loop. Yeah, away from the highway. That's true. Just say inside the loop. Okay. <laughs> don't say west or east. We can work with that. Yeah. don't need to say east. They want to put it in the other side. I don't care. <laughs> they want to make another loop. Other side of the loop. Okay. So if you can make, blow this up, 11 by 17. Okay. Okay. Then you can add notes with all that stuff we just read with the hours, a little approval block for me to sign. Yeah. Um, Put the little square for the additional parking, etc. Driveway permit number, whatever. Yeah. Add your directional signs. Okay. Are, are you folks aware that, uh, that an effort was made to have a farmer's market and where? We have, we have done. We've, well, seen evidence. we've seen evidence that at one point there was. Yes. But none of the you know no one was able to provide us any information as to where it is, what happened it to was it. Was on the, in where the gazebo is in that area, mm -hmm. okay. in the center of town. Um, there were a lot of vendors. Don't ask me how many a lot are initially, and after a few years there was about one. Okay. And eventually he pulled out. Um, I don't remember the name of the woman who was organizing. I don't know either, but I would bet in the beginning there was probably 20, 15, 20 people there, vendors. Yeah. But, but then at the same time, Moody Place started having their farmer's market slash thing in competition to them. And that kind of, they both just kind of died out. We are aware that Facebook has a page called Where's Farmer's Market, but it's operated by a group in Warner. Or Henniker. Um, well, that's strange. They haven't done anything with it in two and a half years. Or something. There was a guy in Warner that came, sold very, very good breakfast sausage. But <laughs> so if, you get him, if you get him back down <laughs> here again, I'll see it. If you get him back in again, I'll, I'll stop in. <laughs> good to know. It's great. It's great cooking it in the deer stand. It's awesome. The problem was that there just wasn't enough business for hmm? these folks to justify them coming down here and spending morning. Okay. So we have a motion, a second, and we discussed a whole bunch of changes. Do you accept the changes to the motion? I anybody, do. Anybody in the public? Anybody in the public like to speak? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Cour Courtney's not public. She doesn't count. <laughs> You're now. We'll close the public comment. Do we? Are we ready to vote on the motion? Yeah, I believe so. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 
Congratulations. Thank you very much. Make a little, get your DOT permit, make up your little map, give it to Kelly. She'll let me know when it's here. I'll come in and sign it on the way home from work. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kelly, don't lose that. Yes. You need a DOT permit. Yeah, that's, 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 that's going to take some time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I did the drawing, so that's why I'm not going to do my hands Except for the DOT permit, you can do that, yes. Yeah, I can do everything but the DOT. Yeah. Uh, I call this 2410, the Brooks Fillmore Ordinance. Okay. Doug Cook knee jerk reaction to me building the houses on school middle. I thought it was knee jerk reaction to the house beside the meters. Do you have a call? It was all phone commercial. Absolutely. Yeah. I had to get a variance, but I got it. I think it's one. Built the first couple. Oh, I know. I know what you mean. <laughs> well, the guy has a sister right in front of his house. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was the guy in front of me too. So it was the death. Do you need anything else for us? Or? Nope. I, I thank you. Would be very tomorrow. nice. I, I thank you. Would be very nice. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> from our as soon as we get the breakfast sandwiches, I'll be over. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Should we get the minutes out of the way? Okay, okay I like them. They're good to me. Minutes for June 25th, 2020. I didn't. I read them briefly, to be honest. I did not look at the Brookshire additional use permit because I was stepped down. But on that, it looked okay to me. There's probably a bunch okay. of spellings okay. I missed, but. I wondered if we needed a note for Craig to come back as chair and the fact that Chuck left the meeting. Wow, yes. And also the two votes on the back on page two need to be 3 0 because there was only three of us. The vote Chuck on the back left. of the page. Page two. Oh, yeah. Oh, Chuck left. Chuck left. Right, so, so you have to put that. But between. Mm -hmm. Chair between, came back in. Between A and B. Yeah, yeah. between A and B. I, I came back in and Mr. And then Bolton Chuck left. left. Yes. Yeah. That and should be at the end of the conditional use permit. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. And therefore the minutes were voted in favor of three nothing. Wow. Then I didn't know what um, vice chair responded if the permit was approved, there was only one way the driveway could go and approval cannot be granted for a fifty percent grade. Fifteen. Okay, so that should be fifteen and not fifteen. Right. Where are you? No. Page one. Um, Before the indent with the bulleted part. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's 15, one, five? Yes. And then I had a question on uh, page two under B, number two. I had a note that the site is in. Aquifer. Aquifer. Not act for. Did you find a map for that? I oh. did. In the top drawer of a filing cabinet? No. Oh. In the bottom drawer of filing cabinet. Seven on, moved, um, the file, moved it. Driveway shall be constructed to meet the driveway standard for one of two family dwellings I'd add word family in be after two okay. I wasn't at the meeting but it's very unclear to me what you approved that's what I'm reading it right now Neil um, at one point Bruce says that you can't have a 15% grade on the first hundred feet Number five in the approval says a 15 percent. Yeah, it, it, I think what it, number the, the top part, Neil, I think it should read the if the permit is approved, there is only one driveway. Uh, approval cannot exceed and for a grade to exceed 15 percent. Yes, yeah. So cannot be granted if grade exceeds 15 percent. Hold on. Yes. So the, the sentence, the vice chair responded 
If the permit was approved, there is only one way the driveway could go, and approval cannot be granted for a grade on the first 100 feet of driveway that exceeds 15%. Is that what the vice chairman said? Yes. So the conditions. And the, and the bulleted part, the immediate bullet after that, Courtney? Yep. Yes. You got to insert the word family between at, between two and dwellings again. Okay. And also, who was the letter from? Fire ward. Well, it was from the fire wards. Was the action the board took contrary or amending the June 8, 2020 letter? From the fire woods? No, it wasn't contrary at all. It was. But it says the driveway should be constructed to meet the standards for one and two dwellings, and isn't that 10 percent? That was for geometry of the driveway. Driveway. And not, and not, but not the, not the slope, but the width oh, and horizontal geometry. Horizontal geometry, yes. So why don't Probably we should put be at be the said. end of that sentence, and I, and that's other that, than slope? Other than grade, other than grade, yeah. Okay, other than grade. Other than grade applied for? So. What's more specific? How about you see after dwellings you would put comma except for five above period yeah yeah that's fine five describes the grade that we approved i guess um what did you guys actually decide we decided we'll give them a 15 percent grade for 100 feet long Where? driveway section for Sorry. the first for the Starting from the road or somewhere? Well, else? starting from oh, 20, feet feet in. In. 20 feet in, from what from where they have to get their minimum negative pitch off the road. So the first 20 feet is going to be negative. Right. And after that, they can have 15% for 100 feet? Right. That makes sense. I understand that. I don't think this language says that. Or it should say as plan presented or plan reviewed, because that was what it was pretty. That was that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So the only on the thing you need to do is somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. All you got to do that's is. That's what they were reviewing. All you got to do is somewhere and you say as shown on the plan. As shown on the plan. Okay. Maybe number five should say as shown on the plan. How about if you say after second, I've been Mr. Bolton to approve the request of additional use permit for Brookshire LLC of Governor Way as shown on the plan with the following seven conditions. Yeah. Sure. Can do both places. Anywhere, everywhere. And everywhere. Brookshire, Brookshire <laughs> is one word, right? I don't know. I don't. Well, I don't, I don't know. think so. I don't no. think in this case, it is. Was Brookshire, was Brookshire no. one word on the application? No. no. no? I, thought, okay. yeah. I think they spelt it two different words. And, uh, yeah, I think I've seen it both ways. So here, <laughs> yeah, spell check does not like Eleanor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who does like Eleanor? E L A N O R. Oh, spell check doesn't like it. No. <laughs> So, want to make a motion to accept the minutes as amended? And what about the expedite the seagull? Is that okay? They poured the foundation today, so it should be okay. Yeah, they don't have approval yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And I, Tell I'm me sure about I'm, it. <laughs> I'm sure they're doing it in accordance with what you guys approved. I just want to make sure that you're satisfied that this is what you actually approved. Yes. As long as you have the vote three zero rather than four zero, I think so. <laughs> yeah, well, all those conditions were outlined. And you got the number two is aquifer, not act four. Okay. Excuse me. 
I'm good. I'll second your motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? We're nothing. We're getting better. Okay. Correct. No July 23rd so meeting. The next August 11th. August 11th? Okay. Woohoo. Yep. And then there are three, possibly four applications coming in for the end of August. So, anybody have any vacation plans? I'd like to do the wrong meeting. Uh, are these applications time consuming? These easy things like um, emerging lot lines or something, or are they? No, one twenty lot subdivision. No, no, no major, but a little more than merge. <laughs> okay. Yeah, site plan, lot line, maybe two lot lines. Do we conceptual? <clears throat> do we do these minutes from our site walk? I think you did, didn't you? Didn't you adopt? Didn't you approve those on June twenty fifth? No. No. No, because Neil. Wasn't oh, because Neil brought them in on June twenty fifth. I read them at home, but I don't have them with me. I thought they were great. <laughs> uh, except for the whole thing took two minutes. <laughs> Say that again? The whole thing took two minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, because you said began at 5.15, ended at 5.17. Oh, so boy, we're good. You know, we were really good. <laughs> <laughs> Neil has complimented me for getting out of here while well, it's still daylight. <laughs> we really went around that place quick. So I assume, I, I assume you're going to amend it to... Something. I, I, I say 527, maybe. What's the date on those minutes? I haven't seen June 18th, site walk minutes that Neil yeah, sent. I didn't, put, I didn't put you on the list. Oh. No, I, I don't know why you didn't get it. Oh, every time I send you something, it bounces back. Maybe you have the wrong email. What's your email? But I send it to the same one that Kelly sends me. Be careful you say it over the speaker. Well, you, won't, you, don't, have a oh, okay. you don't have a microphone in front of you, but be careful anyway. I'll write it down. And Thank you. So we have a motion to approve the minutes. We're changing the end time to 537? Sure. Second? I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Nice Ke catch. Kelly's got building permit stuff for us. And i got two more things to talk about. I do. So I sent out some other information about... Um, Revenue collected and number of homes. I didn't know if you had any questions about that. But they also. Um, Did you send that out? Yeah. Did you send that out to Anthony? Right here. Check like that. I can give you a copy, oh, except. That's, that's, that's the better. previous Thanks. one? Except oh, there was a. Give us a new one? Except there was a new highlighted note because we, we cut it down to like five months in 2019 compared to the five months that I gave you for 2020. And I don't have those. Does somebody have those numbers on this? No. No. So for five months, January through May 31st of 2019, if you cut that, the price that you had down there, the 71000 if you just do it for five months, it's 25709 because I provided the first five months of 2020, and that number is 27041 so you're a couple of thousand dollars off from year to year, but June I already collected eight thousand four hundred. Kind of over. Are people but complaining? It, they're complaining about what the square footage is now, and it's inconsistent and it's being challenged. So that's why we wanted to go back and revisit the terminology um, from finished square footage, finished construction, finished area, however it's worded. Uh, aside from that, Kelly, do you know if we're sort of in the ballpark with other towns as to what they charge for building permits or board? No. Too high or too low? We're too high. Excuse me. We're too high. And um, the four towns that I received information of is they do their unfinished area at half price and their finished livable, usable, habitable, heated space. Um, so if we, were, if we stay with the 50 cents, they're doing their basements, decks, porches, um, unfinished areas at 25 cents. And 50 and 25 seems like the going rate. The ballpark. When we, ca when we calculated some numbers, it, it felt like the ballpark figure. Yeah. Um, 
and then we discussed options and one of the options was Craig said well 30 cents gross floor 40, square, 40, 40 cents. cents gross floor square area and um, it was roughly the same number yep so that's where we were, we were at for options whether so we I, just I was, I was thinking about that concept Craig and what you're really saying is a guy who wants to put up a garage a four car garage is going to pay about the same amount of money as, and no finished floor or anything like that just dirt floor to pay the same amount of money as a guy putting up a, a small house that doesn't make sense no I think it ought to be 20, 50 and 25 personally if you did that then it's well th then you have the uh, then you have the complaint about is it finished or not? Is the basement finished? No, we're, we're going to add. So we're going to define it. Yeah. Right. I think, I think finishing is, it's, is too vague of a term. So With the term I see other towns use is heated. Heated area. So that finished so you heated could have area. A, you could have it in what I would consider to be a finished livable basement that wasn't heated, and you're still going to get 25 cents per they foot won't, for it. They won't do finished livable basement. You wouldn't be able to heated. live in an unheated area. Right. Especially rental. According to the health officer and according to state, you wouldn't be able to rent it out without heat. Okay, I'm not worried about renting it out. I got a house with a basement in it; it has yeah. no heat in it. Yeah. And I put put some uh, sheet rock, sheet rock, sheet, and I'm gonna sheet, and everything. I'm gonna sheet rock, sheet rock the walls. Yeah, I'm gonna make heater. make a man cave out of it with no heater. There's always gonna be a scenario. There's always gonna be that one person who. Does one it. person. A lot of people do it. Don't well, put heat in their basement. They fix I, they fix it up. I would rather concentrate on the majority of finished and unfinished there's no way you're gonna you know where you're gonna catch well, I was gonna go thing. gross for it don't worry about it yeah but you're gonna get challenged because then you got a then you got the same doll you got the same figure for yeah, finished no. areas unfinished area yep. and it's it's not like Neil's it's not scenario, equitable right. Neil's scenario is you know you're building a garage but yet if you put an addition yeah. on it it, it may sound good I understand what you're saying but I think it's still it's challenging easier for me to it's do that but it's challengeable I think it's looking for and I just need everything defined because it's all the same figure. Black and white. Yeah. yeah, I know it's easy. I know what you say. I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't work. I don't think challengeable is the right it word. Would be it's, easy. It's, How do other towns? Maybe it doesn't make sense. But is it heated? Nope. That, uh, Bruce brought that up but as an option. Um, let me see if I can quickly. Oh, and the other thing that we talked about is that um, New Hampshire construction, they're uh, they have a cost every year that they put an average cost out, and right now that is $143.34 per square foot. For a, a home? Yeah, to, to completed build. To, com for a single family. And that includes the ground? It's a lot? It's supposed no. to include the construction of a home. Right? It includes construction. doesn't include the, the ground. doesn't include the lot. Does it, include it includes the well? digging. No, that includes digging no, the foundation, the well hole, and building the house. No well, no septic, no nothing. It That's doesn't include site work. It's a foundation up, essentially. So yeah. Goffstown has um, 22 cents per square foot, and then 15 cents per square foot, and then it goes into electrical and plumbing at a different cost. Yeah, but they, they throw all the other stuff on top, so. Dunbarton has 25 finished living area, 15 unfinished living, um, excuse me, unfinished area with an asterisk explaining what that means, and detached construction at 25 cents. So you see how they actually separated it? That's what I like to do is define it, black and white, what you're calculating. And then, so let's see, did I do Goffstown already? Yep. Yeah. That's the first one yes, you're right. Yep. Then Bo is... Um, 25 cents basement finished unfinished 10 cents second floor 25 garage 10 deck and porch 25 demolition 10 so they separate theirs for a different cents per square foot yeah they're all adding on mechanical stool on top of that right yeah there's a base rate for um i know both base permits 40 dollars we have 50. Uh, uh, Henniker, I can't even go into because they're not doing it anymore. So those are the ones that I looked at. So what's your definition of finished? So they Cause, have... Because the way I look at it, if, it's, if it meets finished, if it doesn't meet finished, it's going to be unfinished. 
Um, just okay. taking this one for example, it doesn't say finished, it said, but unfinished area applies to connected, attached construction, including garage, deck, porch, basement, patios, usable attic space, and storage. Usable attic space and storage is considered any enclosed or covered area with a surface area fit for walking and or storage. See? In other words, there's that six, eight height. If you yeah, can walk if it's through. A, if it's a cape in the new wall, it doesn't count. Right. So that's unfinished at 15 cents a square foot. Finished living area is 25 cents a square foot. And you can define it if you want, but that's pretty easy to calculate. It. It's the unfinished ones that you. Yeah, but the ones that are charging about. 25 and 15, they're getting big mechanical permits too, right? Electrical and plumbing and all that. They're charging per fixture or something. And by the time they're so done. the individual trade permits for Dunbarton, it's just the one I picked up, is $50 per use per trade. Septic review is 40, home business inspections 50, health department 50. Oh, okay. Um, but so that, that's different for Dunbarton. So let's back up. We're still at 25 and 50, right? We are at 50 cents a square foot right now. We're talking about 25 and 50, right? right? Yeah. And since nobody seems to think my gross floor area is a good idea, I still haven't heard a good definition for finished and un unfinished. Other than heated. Instead of heated, if you said insulated. Inside a thermal envelope. Ooh. Regardless of whether you're heating it or not, if you put insulation in there, you pay 50 cents. If you don't put insulation, it's 25 cents. That work? I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's heated, but different way of approaching it. Finished basement area would include sheet rock, sheet rock wall, or wall covering, flooring, and any part of the basement. Doesn't say anything about heated. Kelly, when somebody comes in to you and says, I'd like a building permit, what do they show you? Anything? Um, house plans. They have to show you a plan. Well, it's the application has all the basic information, then there's plans, there's a site plan, there's construction plans. Does the house plan show you the areas that are finished and unfinished? Yes. So just if you can, so this is, this is a particular house plan that came in. It's got all my calculations on it already. So what I had to go and do is calculate this first floor. They, they provided that first floor diagram. Yeah, it's a bigger plan, but this is just showing you. So this is the first floor. So I have to go in and calculate the actual square footage of the rooms. So, and this came out well, garage and the kitchen area, living area, porch and the deck and all that. It came out to 2,000 square feet for the living area and 676 square feet for the garage. So then I go to the second floor. The second floor has a finished stairwell and the two bedrooms, a hallway, and a bath. So and that square footage came out to 726. So you're not just going by the 30 by 40 house, you're actually calculating the room. Then I go to the basement. I gotta deduct the garage, because that's on the slab. So then I'm just doing the living area, and that came out just for the basement, and that came out for 1644. So then I add those numbers together. So the whole total square footage is 5,046. The basement at 1644, was that basement finished, unfinished? Unfinished. It says unfinished. So when we go to inspect, it should be unfinished. But of course, two years <laughs> later, they could finish it. You'd never know. Well, if they come for a, in for a permit, that's when we can do another permit and another fee to finish it. Yeah, but. but if we know about it, they come in for a permit, that's fine. But sometimes we don't, but then the assessor catches it, and then we can ask for a permit then. So the whole total came to 5,046. At 50 cents wow. a square at 50 square cents feet. A square foot, square feet. At 50 cents a square foot, the permit application fee would be $2,523. Isn't that a huge amount of money? Yeah, that's, that's what we're getting at. That's, that's what we're getting at. Yeah. So prior to the 50 cent square foot, you had $6 per thousand. This particular, this particular builder um, said that this house cost $240,000 to build. 
and that would have been one thousand four hundred and forty dollars at the six dollars per thousand so how, how much the square foot was he estimating get that calculator I do. <clears throat> I want to compare that to the hundred forty three dollars you were talking about what so the six dollars per thousand he said it was two hundred forty thousand that fee would have been one thousand four hundred and forty dollars so you want by the number of square feet divided by the square feet yeah that <laughs> point two eight five 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 twenty eight no you want to wait that's twenty eight cents a square foot right no how much? How much do you say it cost? It, or what was, no, the, no, he wants the square. He wants the square footage. No, no. Oh. Divide two hundred forty thousand by the square footage. Divided by the, the square footage is five oh six. Forty seven point fifty six. That's a that's absurdly low. Yes. You can't build a house today for forty seven. So how does? No. Oh, he, that's what they put on the application. Okay. So that's what the problem has been with the six dollars per thousand is there's no way to actually prove how much that house cost. No, we gotta do it we gotta do it on square footage. We so you have to that. do it on square footage. Yeah. There's, there's so no the, there's no arguing that point. Right. We already and that's why we changed it to begin with, but we yeah. didn't define it good enough so that it wouldn't be challenged on fifty cents square foot gross floor. Yeah. Do, do we know how much it costs us to inspect the building and do everything you do and so forth. No, we, no, because that's not what the revenue goes to. The revenue does not go towards inspections or administration of building department. Did you, in your search for more information, did you find out on average what it costs for building in Henniker or Dunbarton or Goffstown or whatever town you check? In other words, what does a builder have to pay as a fee for a typical house, an average house? Do you know that? What does a builder have to pay for? What the, the yeah, I gave fee, you those the prices. building permit fee. Yeah, that's the ones I gave you. So if somebody was building a house in in Goffstown, they're paying twenty two cents a square foot. So I understand that, but I'm talking about the total, the total amount. You don't the cost of construction of that home. No, do you have any no. idea what they end up paying for fees in Goffstown for well, that same house? Well, that's what that's what I'm going to do now. So tw the the if I do if I take twenty four cents times that square footage. Right? Mm -hmm. Plus the electrical and plus the mechanical plus the 1,110. Plus the electrical plus the mechanical plus whatever they also got. Well, that, your building permit includes most of those permits except for mechanical. Here it does, but the Goss Town? Right. I don't think Goss Town does. Mm -hmm. I don't think they do either. Okay. They have a minimal $50 application fee or $0.08 cents a square foot. For what? Electrical. So they get $0.08 cents a square foot Plumbing. for electrical. So they get eight cents a square foot for plumbing. Right. So that's sixteen so, so, so cents. So your twenty-two well, cents 22 is now thirty-eight. Plus eight, plus eight. It's thirty-eight. Uh, let's see. That's what I mean. No down. <laughs> We're getting close yeah. to a fifty yeah. real quick, like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thirty-eight cents. What else you got? On this one, on Grafton. What about what about the uh, gas and stuff like that? I, I didn't see mechanical on there. Right. Uh, maybe that the fire department, department does department. it. Right. So. That's us too. What did she say that? House was fifty five hundred square feet when you fit it. This one? Yeah. Five oh four six. So there goes down to close to forty. And that would be oh. So the New Hampshire construction must do something different. One nine one seven. So turn two grand. Yep. That's what I mean. I think we're it the bike at fifty cents were high, but so is Goffstown's broken down into finished and unfinished? Square area upon which fees are based shall be the sum of the gross horizontal areas of all floors of the building and including cellars, basements, usable parts of attics, except that in a dwelling house, attic floors shall not include in the calculation unless they are used for habitable rooms. So my idea of 40 cents per gross floor area is about the two cents more than Goffstown. Right. In well, but they're, they're, they're not charging. I, the plumbing, they're not paying for the plumbing in the garage. Well, yeah. Okay. Right. The, so so they, they're, they're saving a little bit in the other permits because of areas that don't get plumbing and electrical. What areas don't get electrical? Decks. 
they probably don't decks, mm. porches. So they probably get reduced right. square footages okay. on those. Yeah, they do. And I don't want to get, you know, that intense with. I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to make it simple yeah. for you. Everybody else trying to make that, it difficult. The way they do it, that's a full time job for somebody just doing that stuff. Oh, yeah. I was trying to make it simple. I, I am too. F 25 and 50. The, you got to define what's 15, <laughs> what's 25. Well, we did. We, and then, no, you didn't. So, well, wait a minute. So I've been asked, asked three times so now for I, definition, and I haven't got so one. We were talking I'm about. Heat insulated like a heated. We were talking about um, unfinished. Yes. Have unfinished habitable, twenty-five cents a square foot. How about if we say unfinished, no electrical, no plumbing. Finished, finished. living space or F finished. That basement's got space. a little bit of electrical, but no plumbing. I'm sorry, say that again. Just say the unfinished has no electrical, no plumbing. Yeah, I can't do that you, 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 because you, there's there's. But your garage has. There's a couple outlets in the garage. You got a garage door open. You got lights. There's a little bit of electrical in there. And there okay, be, then they're going to get charged eight cents a square foot. <laughs> There should be a light switch and a detective up in the attic. Yeah, space, good. So and we're going to get fit twenty. We're going to get twenty five cents. There's got to be at least you know four four bulbs in the basement with an outlet. <laughs> okay. No. See what I mean? This is this is what happens. Yeah. This is and each contractor, each homeowner, they're going to approach it different. That's a different opinion. Oh yeah. That's why I would like to have it in black and white. And there's always going to be a what if, and, and I can handle those you know once in a while what ifs or individual. And I make note of it so that if it does come up again, I'm consistent. Like, oh, yeah, Craig I, had the same situation. What did I, I do? Kind of like heated and unheated myself. Yeah, heated and unheated would work. I'm trying to think Is of a scenario. Way, could we make it easier for you as an administrator if you didn't have to calculate the interior square footage of every $5,000. <laughs> no matter what you're building. Built they house. usually Built buy that. Five grand. The, the builders, <laughs> if, if we went with a square footage, the builders always tell you what their living area space is and what their. Um, oh, they do. But they use the terminology livable area, usable area, and that was not our terminology in how we did it. So, but they usually they. So you don't have to do that. I do it, but they provide that information. Why do you do it if they provide because it? Because nine out of ten times they <laughs> they're calculating unfinished area for a cheaper rate when it's really a finished area. Or if it, if the basement did not have that stamp that said this is an unfinished basement, and they're calculating it as a so a closet's not heated, so it doesn't get started twenty five cents. I go foundation to foundation, outside foundation, outside foundation, building envelope. You, yeah. Is it that gross floor area? That's what I'm saying. Thermal envelope. I really think it's a good way to do it too. One, one fee for a thermal? Thermal envelope is 50 cents. Outside the thermal envelope, 25 cents. What is a thermal envelope? It's what's insulated. Heated, Inside heated the insulated. insulated. So if I have a house <clears throat> with an uninsulated basement? 25 cents. Most basements are uninsulated. Yeah. And so... And your deck and your board, and that's all. Yeah. So I could have uninsulated spaces on my living floors. Well, if you want to open your walls, take the insulation out, go ahead. You can't against code. That's against code. Yeah. You have the energy code, the ICC code, you have to. Unless you're off grid uh, and you have to. <laughs> so if I put, if I insulate a couple of walls to make bedrooms in the attic of a cape, that's 50 yep. cents? Yep. The knee walls. Is outside the knee walls is an outside the thermal envelope, so. Yep. I have to deduct knee walls. I gotta go you know, deduct the But that's not it considered unfinished space at 25 cents. Yes, it is. Oh, it is? Yeah. Even though well, it's three Well, actually, no, it's no, not no, considered no, no, space at all because you're lacking the headroom. Right. If right. you don't have the 6 8 ceiling height and you're deducting the knee walls, that's already so deducted. A basement with crawl space only. Three foot crawl space. Yeah. Doesn't count as anything. Unfinished. You're charging me 25 cents for that? Yep. Why are you not charging me 25 cents for my knee walls in the attic? I am. Oh. I'm not charging full price for up there. You I can, thought Bruce said that no, you, you don't can, charge the, for that. No, we deduct the knee oh, okay. walls. Okay. Uh, out of the finished space, but out it's of, unfinished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I can, deduct, okay. I can deduct the knee walls, but if you've got storage up there and you've got a ceiling, I'm going to, that area is going to be charged at the 50 cent. Yeah. yeah. Kelly, assuming that we go with 25 and 50 and we come up with a definition of finished, Bruce's insulation or whatever we mm -hmm. use, um, will we be 
an outlier or in the ballpark with our surrounding communities? It sounded like I think it's we're going to be in the ballpark. I think because by the time you added up Goffstown, right. it was what almost forty cents. Yeah. Right. And the only permit they'll be paying extra for is the fire department mechanical one, which is fifty. Which so which they pay for Goffstown because that's not in there either. Right. That's what you're right. So I don't know what they're yeah. doing today. Okay. So it might be a little bit higher, but that's the 2020 change. They haven't We're changed these. Doing a base fee for all the for electrical. We have a fifty dollar base rate application. Right. Yeah, for everything. Not per fixture, per. Right. Nope. Right. No we done it. We did away with that. Yeah. And your so base rate application saving. before used to be fifteen, so we've gone up to so to get rid of all of that per outlet or right. per, common toilets. Yeah. Per yeah. plumbing. Yeah. Per, so, so, in addition to the twenty five and fifty. It's fifty dollars for each of three, the three or four permits that I would need for electrical and so forth. No, if that's that's included in your square footage in your building permit. If you come Did in you just for an electrical, no, no, no. She said if you come in just for an electrical, just for an electrical, oh, it's fifty. Like a service change or something. Coming in for okay. a generator or a service upgrade panel, okay, it's fifty dollars. Okay. If you're coming in because you're creating a half if bath I'm, somewhere, if I'm, that's if I'm doing a brand new house with electrical and there's no fifty dollar fee, it's all. If you're putting a roof overhang over your steps, fifty dollars. If it's under two hundred square feet, we want just a zoning application, it's fifty dollars. Okay. If we do a daycare inspection or a foster care inspection, it's fifty dollars. Things okay, like that. Is Bruce's definition of insulated space work for you? Is that something that is clear enough? So we were talking insulated living 50 space, cents for insulated space. Finished heated thermal, thermal envelope. envelope. Finished. finished heated living space. No, that's not what he said. No, but that's what inside the thermal envelope. Gross floor area, right inside the thermal envelope. So it's fifty yeah, cents. That would the basement, but that's all right. Gross well, basements aren't inside the thermal envelope. The, the, you insulate the, the first floor floor. So if I have it, if to me a thermal envelope decides a cubic volume. Yeah, that's that could that be that could make room for interpretation. Somewhere. I think. I think I liked your other one better. What heated space? Yeah. I like the finished heated, heated living space. All three words. Yeah. That tells me a lot. Finished heated living. Not insulated. If they're going to heat it, they no, have no, to insulate no, 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 no. it. Yeah, they have As to. As opposed to heated, insulated space. So, because I can insulate my basement and not heat it, this is Craig's idea. And people are going to do something like that. Sure. It's, it's an easy way to save. Well, if you, if you insulate a basement right, hmm? if you insulate a basement right, you don't need any heat. No. The, the boy having the hot water heater down there alone eats the. In the man cave TV and yeah. so, and I'm water saying heater. And so that's still unfinished, though. Lighting. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not. It's not heated. It's not insulated. If if you use Bruce's definition, Kelly, and I don't heat that space, but I insulate it, it's twenty five cents. If you use Bruce's other definition, which had nothing to do with heat, it had to do with insulation. Right. Yeah. If you say finished insulated space, we don't care whether you heat it or not. That's fifty cents. You insulate it. I, I'm, I'm with Neil because if somebody, I mean, I, I, I haven't seen anybody do this for years, but to build an expansion cape with the, all, the second floor all, the roof done, the windows in, everything done, it's insulated, but there's no, no drywall or no carpet, but there's no heat, but it's all insulated. Yeah. You yeah. should charge them the 50 cents because they're going to be building that without a permit. They're going to be finishing it without a permit. Right, right, right. All the unfinished capes they used to buy in the 60s. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So finished that insulated living space. Yeah, finished. Not finished. Why do you want to say living? Insulated. What does living mean? Not dead. It means you can. It means cold. You can walk up it there. It means habitable. It means usable. It means you can walk up there. It means you can. I would say living means that people. I'm going to use it for other than storage. For people to use it. it Change it to really habitable. I I mean, it, it, uh, if people want to st store stuff in a cold attic. I don't think you ought to charge them 50 cents for that anyway. No, no. Unless it's... Unless it's living space. Unless you start putting... The whole thing is, you know, six, eight ceiling height, and it's got a couple of egress-sized oh. windows. That makes me nervous yeah. <laughs> that that's going to be a bedroom. But, it's, but Bruce solves that problem by using insulated. It doesn't matter whether it's heat, whether it's right. living space or not. If you insulate it, it's 50 cents. Right. How about finished insulated gross area? Why do you need finished? 
Well, you had gross, then you're making it weird. And I don't think I just finished either. Because like Neil says, and like I'm thinking. Well, no, I want finished and unfinished. Those are the two terminologies that everybody uses. Yeah. Okay, then finished means insulated. Yeah. Finished insulated area? Mm-hmm. Floor area, right? Floor area? Floor. Yeah, because you're basing all your, your area calculations on floor area. Yeah. Finished insulated floor area at 50 cents per square foot. Okay, now let me uh, give you just something that happened in my case. We got a cape, and I insulated the entire ceiling from the gable to the E. From you, did the a hot, you did a hot roof. To the E, okay? Yep. Cathedral ceiling. The, the um, crawl space, I call it, on, you know, three feet, that's insulated. Yeah, but it's not... It's, it's not um, because anything that doesn't have the proper headroom height, you won't count anyway. Okay. It needs to have that six eight headroom height. Right. Or well, whatever the it's code, yeah. Right. And may I make a suggestion that whatever we decide tonight is not final? So it goes to select. People got to think on it. It's got to go right. to selectmen, but we we agree. no no we need to think on it before we send it to the select. Right 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 yeah. Uh, because right. you know that when you get home tonight. Yeah, everybody's gonna go. And I'd like to run it by Kyle too. But. Yep. And fire chief, he's out doing inspections too. So, um, so the unfinished. Is everything else? Unhabitable areas. Can be everything else. Well, it, you don't want to say unhabitable because decks are habitable. You can't. I mean, okay. right? All Just, area not finished. Yeah, unfinished yeah. areas at twenty-five cents. Yeah. Everything else. Don't try to define <laughs> it. Then you're going to get stuck. It's not neither kind of right. Right. <laughs> Basement, yeah. some attic space, defined, deck, right. porch. Those would be for example. You can give examples. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to try to write something up. The things that I've come across, you know, like yeah. frequently asked questions. <laughs> <laughs> pools. I got a lot of pools this year. So how do you how do you uh, get a building permit? How do you figure the so, cost? So so right now because it's been like really undefined, um, instead of doing a basic application, which used to be fifteen, or the cost of the pool at six dollars a thousand. I've gone with uh, $50 for the application, the zoning permit application, $50 for the electrical, and if there was uh, a fence or a barrier or you know another part of an inspection process going on out there, it was $50. So most likely it was $150 for a pool. What about the deck around it? As I meant, if there was something else around it, yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Could it be any type of barrier, whether it's a deck or a fence or something? Yeah. I yeah. counted that as. Is that an in-ground pool or an above-ground pool? Yeah, both. <laughs> above-ground pool is considered a building? Oh, yeah, yeah, you still have to have it. You still got to ground it, and you still got to do all the bonding. There's, yeah, there's a bunch of electrical you got to do for them. So I have a note here. The finished basement area could include sheetrock, wall covering, or flooring. Is that still a, a common sentence that I could use with? I like to do, like, frequently asked questions about building permit fees. Mm -hmm. So if that was an example of what a finished basement is defined as. Can you read that again, please? A finished basement area could include sheetrock, wall covering, flooring, or any in any part of the basement. I think you're getting you're, you're getting away from the definition of insulated. If it's insulated, don't care about anything else. You want to have your insulation without sheetrock, that's your business. If it's insulated, it's 50 So I've got to put the word finished basement, it includes insulation. Yes. Yep. Okay. Finished is insulated. Area, yes. area insulated. Because properly insulated, you don't need heat in the basement, like Craig says. You don't. So garages, carports, porches, decks, sheds. They're not, it's, unless you're insulating your garage. And, and some people do. They insulate and heat the garage. And then you want yep. to get 50 yep. cents for those. Yep. 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 Just put in the car, if you insulate it, the car will put enough heat yeah. to keep, keep it freezing. And I wanted to put, you know, it calculating will. the square footage upon the, the fees is based on the sum of, you know, finished and start explaining that. how I am calculating. Insulate the basement? Yeah. That's, That's why I want to there. come up with that. You used to have an electric fireplace. It got too hot. This has been a very illuminating discussion. Let's see how it's distilled by Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have to stew on it overnight. I, I still like my gross floor area, but that's all right. I, I know, and that was an option. Same as that 
No, New Hampshire State Construction, 143 per square foot. I don't know how they do that. I don't know. Because that house you gave as an example is $727,000. Yeah, but that's per finish. That's that they're not using 5,000 square feet for that 143. They're using the footprint. The heated space. <laughs> Which was three thousand square feet, I think. This is, well, this house is thirty by fifty. If you're doing that, two thing. stories, two, plus the basement. Wow, three stories. Three stories. Yeah, but upstairs wasn't no, it's not. <laughs> upstairs wasn't that much space either. Upstairs, no, half no, of that. Right, half of that. Because this, this is with a garage. So, oh, so no, it's not even. It's what, what is it in the back? So it's about two thousand square feet. We'll call it. So it's forty-two. Yeah. 42 by 30. That's 1,200 per floor. Yeah, it should have been closer to 300,000, not 240. The garage goes all the way here, so mm -hmm. it's 30 feet here, but the garage is 26 feet. So. <laughs> it's 350. Hmm? It's 350, not two, 250 that he yeah. quoted her. Yeah. Maybe that's what he's building it for, but selling it for four. I don't even I don't know how they come up with their numbers. I, I was baffled the first time I did a building permit. I'm like, well, what do you mean you're not giving me any square footage? Well, it's based on value. Well, where's the contract then? Yeah. <laughs> where's the material list? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Okay. So okay. I guess we just it's not a motion or anything. We're not approving this yet. Right. Or is no, this we're thinking about it. We're continuing. To, can, yeah. We're going to talk about it again in a month. In August. Yeah. Are you gonna. Write something up that you're looking for for a finalized version that we can look at. You gonna, yeah. you gonna wait a month, Kelly? When you come up with something, could you email it to us? Yeah. I know. I know. Maybe it'd be more than that too. Maybe more than that. You know that. Well, I would rather not wait. Can I can I write up something for you and then um, also send it to the selectmen for their next meeting and get their opinion and instead of waiting another August because we're not meeting in July. So right. so that's twice in a month. Right. I, I and we make this kind of an option that you recommend and then take it to the selectmen and see what they said. After you get our feedback, yes. But I'd hate to see you send it both to us and to the selectmen at the same time, and we look at it and say, "Whoa, there was a misunderstanding here." Okay. So I'm going to take this definition with the square footage that we talked about, and I'll show you the difference of what it's going to be. I'm not sure we can do that outside of a meeting. I can't. I can't do a synopsis of what we just talked about. You, you can. You can certainly do a, You can certainly do a synopsis and send it to us. I'm not sure we can say yay or nay outside of a meeting. No, no. Oh. It's, it's not a vote. It, right. It's an opinion. It's a follow-up, but you can't vote on it. Don't you want a recommendation from us to go to the selectman with? I would like it. Yeah, I, I knew that. That's they where, have their we, meeting in the next couple of weeks. That's what I'm saying. We can't do that without a meeting, I don't believe. You're not, you're not comfortable with what the wording is? is I don't know. I heard a lot of discussion. When I see what you've written up, because you heard it one way, I heard it another way. Uh, Finished insulated area. How about this way? Four. How about if we make the recommendation based on our discussion, if after looking at the final draft we have a problem with it, we'll have to have one more meeting. Right, and the pub when, you, when you can discuss that at the public hearing with the selectmen too, though, can't you? Yeah, but when I when I put something out to somebody else, I want to make sure it's what I really mean and it's the best that I can do. I don't want to give them a draft of something when I haven't really considered it. It's embarrassing if, we, if it turns out that it doesn't reflect what we thought, or we have second thoughts and realize there are holes in what we've done. So what, what are you looking at to, to fill that hole that you think you're missing? I, I have no idea. I haven't seen what you've written. <laughs> so finished insulated floor area. No, but you're going to write all sorts of things about examples and so forth. The other thing is... No, no, that's, no, that's going to be... 
So you can do that as a handout that, separate from this. That's going to be on my own as a handout, like frequently that's asked not, questions. That's not going to be part of the... It's already on my building department website. You know, do I need a permit for this? What do I have to do for that? It's just like frequently asked questions. Because I just want to narrow it down. That's and I can come back to you anytime on that and say, so what do you think about this? How yeah, do you... Say, I wouldn't put... I wouldn't be putting examples in this at all. You no, just no, want no, a no, definition. No, right. The example thing you do is your own handout. Right. So you're doing. You're so you can tune that example thing up anytime you want. Right. So give me the example. Yeah, say that again. again yep. Finished and unfinished. Finished, insulated floor area, fifty cents per square foot. What is? I understand what insulated means. I understand what floor area means. What does finished mean? I agree. So if, well, a, so, if my, so if my basement has a concrete concrete floor on it that has insulation in the walls, See, I, I, I don't, don't have think, any drywall. I don't think you need to use the word finished, exactly. Exactly. to be honest with you. Okay. Right. I, I think, no, I think that the definition is this. Insulated we have finished floor and unfinished. Finished means an area that is insulated and, what was the other word you used? It's the gross insulated floor area. Finished means the gross insulated floor area. Unfinished is all other area. All and other that's what we had. Areas. Yep. But that's your definition of finish, though. You're not saying you're not right. staying drywall, carpet, anything like that. Just no. gross so. insulated floor area. Right. Gross it's insulated floor area, 50 cents per square foot. Yes. Foot. And in parentheses or whatever, I can put a definition of a finished. No, I wouldn't put any. Def I wouldn't no, put any okay. examples. You can do it as your own separate handout. Okay, yep. So that's not part of that. So that you can change that anytime you want to tune gross it up. Gross insulated floor area, 50 cents per square foot. And the reason all other areas 25 cents a square foot yes. right simple easy to, yep. then you're not using the word unfinished no well i think you should use well i'm gonna i'll put it in my unfinished means all other floor yeah areas. yeah gross uninsulated floor area is 25 cents <laughs> a square foot okay that works because that doesn't leave a gap <laughs> right but i can do that as a write-up right i just want something to change that sentence that we have permit fee schedule is one two so I'll make a motion to recommend to the selectmen the modified definitions of finished and unfinished and the building permit rate of 50 cents for finished and 25 cents for the unfinished. Can I, can I reword your motion? Instead of saying definition of finished and unfinished, we aren't doing that. We're setting a rate of 50 cents for gross insulated floor areas and 25 cents for all other areas. Okay. We don't have anything to do with finished and unfinished. Fine. So you're setting a rate for the gross floor area. Gross insulated, insulated floor area. Gross insulated floor area. At 50 That's cents. the motion, yep. Right? Yes. Right? You yep. seconded? Discussion. Whew. It's almost dark. No, All in favor? Aye. 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 Good, thank you. Whew. Now you don't have to wait. Huh? Now you don't, don't have to wait. wait. Yeah. And no unnecessary emails. <laughs> COVID well, emails. I'll still, I mean, I, I no, value I your you're... opinion and yeah. appreciate what you can provide. So even when I do <coughs> come up with some definitions of my own or my what ifs or frequently asked questions, I'll still send it to you. <laughs> I got a two part question slash comment. Since it's now 2020 and our master plan, I think, was done in 20, 2007. Is that right? Are you doing this? Yes, okay. I believe. And since there was a Warren article a couple of years ago that said the selectmen should, shall, whatever, update the master plan, I have a two-pronged approach to such thing. One, we got a bill from Southern New Hampshire Planning every year. I don't see the price right here, but it's $5,000. This is for us to is this where to be a member? Oh, $6,000, yes. $5,989. Fifty nine hundred eighty nine dollars So call it six grand that we pay yearly. To be blunt, the only thing I know that they've ever done for us as a planning board is come in and tell us how they can help us, and but it's going to cost us more money. That's about the only thing they've ever done for us. They have reviewed a plan, Remillard's plan, they reviewed for us, but I think that was mostly at the request of Goffstown, not the request of us. I get a weekly or bi-weekly mass email mailing that tells me what they're doing, which is mostly applying for grants to the federal government to help municipalities. Personally, I think 
do we should get not pay the six hundred dollars, drop out of Southern New Hampshire planning, use that six thousand dollars towards the master plan, and ask for ten thousand to do a third of the master plan, six thousand of which comes from the money we would have spent Southern New Hampshire planning. At the same time, saying all that, I don't think it's a planning board decision to drop out of Southern New Hampshire regional planning. I think it's Suckman's decision. Oh, okay. I think. That's my Southern New Hampshire planning master plan idea. You think it would take well, 30,000 30, over three years to do the plan? Yes. Do you have any basis for that? Or That's that what Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission keeps telling us. Okay. They've told me that three times. I mean, we had Jack Bunn in here one time yep. talking about it. We had Dave Priest in here one time talking about it. And then we had, I can't think of her name. Otto Walker. Otto Walker. Yes. Hey, Otto. question, Craig. Hmm? Will, will Southern New Hampshire do this for us if we're not a member, even if we pay for it? I don't know, but there's other private companies that would, that do. For that money? Yeah. I believe so, yes. So the money that you keep in your budget, instead of paying them, you're going to keep it going towards the master plan? It's not our budget. Right, it's not our budget. I believe it's, I believe it's up to Selectman. I mean, I do know they do traffic counts in town. They do some other things that I never see the results of, but they do other things. Okay. They helped with the Wellhead Protection Act, Protection Plan once. They did a. Tom Claw was in on it. What was that thing they just did? The hazardous uh, hazardous mitigation. Hazardous mitigation yeah. plan. Yeah. Uh, to be blunt, the Wellhead Protection thing. You, there were six of us that met every Wednesday morning for two months, and somebody yep. in Southern New Hampshire Planning came in and talked to us for a half hour and left. You have and to they, typed, they typed up a plan. Otherwise you don't they got grant money. money to do that as long as we spent time. If you don't update your hazard mitigation plan, you don't get federal FEMA money. Or FEMA. I don't see how that. I don't see. Yeah, but that. it's got to yeah, be updated. Yeah, you know. every three years, five years. I don't remember. I just, I, I don't. That's, a not, that's not a bad idea. It's certainly a good starting point. Do you think that you could get some of these private companies to come in and give us a presentation? Sure. A couple of them, so that we yeah. can. I mean, I'd like to make sure that, in fact, we can do it for thirty grand over three years the without Southern New Hampshire. Yeah. Unfortunately, this bill is due. When? For the period of July first to June thirtieth. So it's probably due July 1st, or a little before. So community dues Either. for participation is July 1st or June 30th. Either way, it, it doesn't have to happen now. We can start a discussion now with the selectmen about it. And it. We could start it next year. But still, get a, we could still try to get a warrant article for 10 grand to get the whole thing started. 15 is the CIP limit. We don't do anything below 15. I talked to Jack about that. Jack called me about CIP. Yeah, he was talking. He was talking about CIP. Plus, I had a plan that I recorded for him. He didn't think this would be a CIP thing, even if it was fifteen grand, because it's not something you physically use, like a truck. Oh, it's not capital equipment. Right. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know. Rack the pop and gets goes for. So you want me to check what's with Naomi first to see who the jurisdiction is? On? What's the yeah. Difference? What's the difference between the, the, the letter plan comes to me. I know that. And the rec department won a use plan for their grounds that they tried to get a couple of years ago that was on the CIP. I don't know. Jack and I talked about it for a half hour. Engineering services. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be basic. Uh, Jack Dearborn? Yeah. This morning. You said Jack Meany. Maybe I did. I met Jack Dearborn. Okay. <laughs> and he didn't think it was CIP. But I t yeah, I mean, the letter came to me, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. Okay. I'll, I'll double check on who has the authority for it. Did you want to talk about... Um, Private roads? That's right down here. Okay. I've got through this one and this one real quickly. So the three of us met with Bill Drescher couple weeks ago and we were talking about private roads I should shot, shot email to Neil Neil brought up can we do that for class six roads basically 
what Bill suggested is to put a zoning ordinance for this proposed zoning ordinance for this fall to allow buildings on a class or a private road and I guess assume a class six road and or class six road with the conditional use permit from the planning board so therefore you don't need a variance you need a zoning board is not in on it it's us which kind of makes sense in lots of ways because the zoning board is more of a ju judicial branch and they really shouldn't be describing thickness of gravel and wearing surfaces and that kind of thing then they would have to come to us to get a conditional use permit that would all be under the innovative land controls which is whatever or I say that is we've already spouted it off someplace in our zoning 674 41 thank you in that article we would have to say what is needed to get a conditional use permit so we need 24 foot wide travel way we want roads and ditches we want a drainage design we want whatever we want would it be in that article just like the conditions you put for a special exception well, I was going to say just like the condition, conditions we have for a driveway where a kennel. it's 15%. You have a conditional use permit for a kennel. Or a kennel that's or you need. building in a, more than 10% impervious to knock That's in the zoning right. what you have to do. Right. Very same thing. Then that would make them come here for the conditional use permit. New what you're system. saying is if you meet these conditions, you can build on a class 6 road. You can build on a private road. Yes. But our ordinance says you can't build in this class six. Well, that's why we have to change the ordinance. Right, we have to right, we right, have right. to allow right. by conditional use permit. Right. Well, what if, if the purpose? But the stipulations would not be a driveway permit or driveway specifications. It, it, different than which driveway. Which is sixteen standards. foot wide. There's no cross sectional definition at all in the driveway regulation. Are you, you know saying what I mean? that, assuming we did this, that if I wanted to build on my lot on a Class 6 road, I would have to pay to build that Class 6 road up to a Class 5 road, effectively? I mean, that's what the conditional, that's what the conditions could say. Yes, that's what I'm saying, yes. At the same time, it could allow us to approve subdivisions with a private road with your gravel surface. Hmm. If it's spelled out, you don't have to pave it in the zoning ordinance. So you got to, you can build on a private road if you do A, B, C, D, E. One is you got to do a drainage study to show where the water runoff is going. You have to have an erosion sedimentation control plan. You got to get your state permits. The travel surface has to be X feet wide. You have to have shoulders X feet wide. You have to have a ditch X feet deep. You have to have a travel surface of a wearing surface of gravel or pavement or if we let say gravel then we could approve private roads in a subdivision then we could say in the subdivision regulations we can approve private roads in a subdivision however you have to have a homeowner association created to maintain that private road and everybody has to belong belong to the 20 homes, they all have to belong to the homeowner like association. Whatever. They all have to pay a dues to the homeowner association to maintain this, to have money in a fund to maintain, maintain this road. Put in the bill. Mm -hmm. So this is a long, gets us a lot of things to think about. Mm. Sure does. Yeah, in one or two or five sentences. And I think it's a great idea. More, but by, proactive but by allowing it, we're taking out of the, Z, the zoning board's to a situation. jurisdiction. Yes. We just did. Right. Yeah, it says that we don't like it until the until the second we don't like it, but to say no yeah. building on it's class six roads. The the ZBA has turned that on its head. Right. I thought the purpose of this was to return the uh, situation to what it was prior to the ZBA's um, Effectively that's what this will do because people will find it's too onerous to meet they, these or, or they just can't. Right. To meet these requirements. And the ZBA w will then have a more difficult time in granting it because we, we've, Denied. it's a different story when 
we, they've been offered this and been to us, and we deny it. If they go to the zoning board for a variance of getting the planning board approval for a conditional use permit, I think that should be tough to get. Really, really tough to get. You're asking for a variance from the planning board? Is this what uh, Dresher. Dresher said? Yeah. You want to keep that on the agenda and start doing, because we're going to start doing zoning changes in the fall anyway. This will be one of the ones we're going to want to start early. Okay. Like August. Okay. <laughs> I'll come up with something. And the first thing we got to do is define private and class, private roads, because there's there no definition for that yet. Right. Hmm? There is no definition, even in the RSA or... or Nope, there's not. So we got to make one. But there's a bunch of towns around the. the but remember, line. Dresher all but gave us one. A private road is any access to three or more lots. Exactly. That's a common driveway. It's okay. two lots. So therefore, it's more than two. It's a private road. Right. So and a private road and where is yeah. the access way to three or more lots? Can you create a private road, or do private roads are That's private roads only those that exist? The other thing to do, that's, I forgot about that. Yes, it's in my notes, actually. The private road definition has to include one of two things, that it shows up on a surveyor's plat prior to date of the ordinance, state of the zoning ordinance, 1980, whatever it was, or it's approved by the planning board on a subdivision plat. Can you come up with a definition? Yeah, I can. I said it was going to a while ago and email it to Bill, and I haven't done it yet. I don't know I'll come up with a conditional use and what happens. Okay. I'm putting it in my calendar. I'll remind you. I know. Hmm. I have an eye appointment Monday. But I think that would be a good way to solve. Yeah, this, this will also allow something like Collins Landing to happen again. Right. With a private road, like they are, which right now they can't. Which There's nothing wrong with that. But that's what we want is if they're going to have a private road, that there has to be a, an organization behind it that's going to maintain it and, and do all that, that everybody that lives has to participate in. Yeah. Written and recording what they're doing. Right. Record right. it. <laughs> I mean, you have to be, same time you want to be doing, you do a cluster subdivision, you have to have the homeowner association. Usually we have what's set up now, they own the open space, mm -hmm. and they are taking care of the open space. At the same time, you add the private road into it, they're on the private road. Whether it's paved or not, whether it's 18 feet or 20 feet or 26 feet or 29 feet or 30 feet, whatever it is wide. That could take a lot of work, just to let everybody know what I'm thinking. Anything else? Mm -hmm. No, we're still doing subdivision. That's all. That will always stay on the agenda. But we're still doing those changes, but maybe August 11th Why? meeting. Why don't we get those done? Because it's 9 o'clock already. What? Because it's 9 o'clock already. No, I'm, I'm not saying right tonight. Oh. <laughs> That's why it's always been on the agenda. There was a couple of things that we needed. Um, what are they? Cistern. We were, we were still questioning the cistern section. Yes, the chief came back and, and said And otherwise, something. remember, we made all these other well, the minor said. corrections. And I remember that now. Cistern was something he, about, it said $3,500 one place. It said. There was a couple of. Oh, I thought we were going to eliminate all the fees varied. Yeah, I thought we were just going to eliminate all the fees completely and just put it. And we ended it like wait and see what the chief says, and then we just. Didn't Did you hear anything back from the chief? No. no. Do you have a copy of what we've talked about so far, I with little so, strike yeah. throughs and bolts no, and all I that kind of so, stuff? Yeah. I'm going to do that too. Can you send it to us, please? Sure. It's been sitting on the. We've been continuing it for several months now, and. Not talking about it. And then there was one time where it was just two of you. It wasn't even a quorum. So right. all we did was go down and do spelling. Yeah, and you, put you, this and I, here. you and I went through the yeah. cistern thing, and 
So that's it really that's needs we to talked be about the three thousand dollars and thirty five thousand dollars. The fee was varied in two different places. Yeah. The fee was different. And what else was on the agenda besides that? What was it? I don't have it. Nothing. That's it. Okay. Anybody can make a motion? Make a motion. We adjourn. Okay. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. <laughs>